Hello everyone, welcome back to another one of my videos. My name is Nick, I talk all about trading and investing, and today we are gonna be talking about mastering candlestick patterns. Now candlestick patterns are a old thing. They are something that is nothing new to markets and uh, they've been around for a long time. So in this video, we're gonna talk about all sorts of stuff, but by the end of the video, the goal is for you to learn what candlestick patterns actually are. I'm sure many of you have already seen what candlesticks are, but what are patterns? How can we use them? What are some of the powerful setups that you can actually look for in your trading and how to actually trade them like a pro? Okay, so let's get into it right now. So what is exactly a candlestick pattern? Now, the actual concept of a candlestick pattern is, like I said, it's nothing new. It was actually created by the Japanese way back in the 17th century to trade rice. Now, they would, you know, as a, as a marketplace should, there is a supply and demand, and they were actually using candlesticks to try and chart and look for that supply and demand in the price of rice. So really, really cool, uh, you know, sort of long time ago uh, application to what we now see as a, a very common thing, the candlestick and candlestick patterns. So basically it's a method to actually read price action and it can be used uh, in technical analysis to look for better setups, ideas, you know, opportunities in the market based on the clues that a couple candlestick patterns can potentially give us. So let's take a look a little bit further. Now, first, why do they actually matter? Well, candlestick patterns can sometimes, like I said, they can leave clues as to what, what the market may do next. It can be extremely effective if used pro properly and actually can help to uh, create some of the better trading setups that are out there, looking for things like rejection, looking for uh, some of the patterns that we're gonna show in just a minute here. Okay, so before we get too far, you need to know the basics of a candlestick. When you look at a candlestick, you have the candle body, which is this big thing here. So on a on a red candle, it's obviously going to be red or whatever color it is, but the basic idea here is that a candle body that is bullish is going to have a starting point and a closing point, right? So this is what we would call the open. This is what we would call the close. This is what would be called the high, and if it had a wick, let's pretend it has a wick, It was this would be the low, right? So in one candle, we get a lot of information about the time frame that we are looking at. We get the high to the low of the range, we get the actual open and close of the range, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then again, the wick uh, is a code name for where price basically extended to but didn't close. So if you were looking at this candle for the, for the newer traders, understanding this, even if you're a slightly more advanced trader, understanding this fully is pretty important. If you see a big fat wick at the top of a candle, what that means is that price tried to get up to those points, it traded up to those levels, but did not hold those levels and ended up coming back down. And those are some of the concepts showing some clues as to what candles can tell us about market participants, what price was doing in certain areas, et cetera. Now, um, yeah, so let's let's go ahead and keep going with that. So the next thing, uh, like I said, open, close, high, low. So again, if you're looking at a green candle, open is the green uh, start, close is the green end, your high of the day or high of the candle, low of the candle as well. And candles, remember, they can be daily candles, they can be four hour candles, one hour candles, there's all different uh, time frames that can be selected when looking at a chart on most charting softwares. Uh, on the red candle, slightly different, right? Obviously, you've got the open being here and the close being here, so the opposite of a green candle, meaning that it is trading lower, but the high and low are still the same. All right, so let's keep going. Candlestick clues. So now that we know basically what candlesticks are and what the wicks could potentially tell us, how do we actually determine the story about what market, market participants are actually thinking about? Well, candlestick patterns are a series of candlesticks in a powerful formation of some sort. Now, there are many candlestick patterns, but the idea is, okay, now we have the idea of candles on their own, right? But what happens when we combine a couple of them to potentially read into what price is doing in response to certain levels on the chart? Well, our first pattern is going to be the engulfing pattern. This is one that I personally really, really like, uh, and we're gonna talk about why this one really matters. I think this is probably the most obvious candlestick pattern to understand, even to a new trader who has no idea what uh, candlestick patterns are. A engulfing candlestick basically entirely engulfs the previous candle going the opposite way. So let's say that you're seeing a market that's traveling down, things are not looking good, but then 
all of a sudden you see this ginormous green candle that comes in. Just naturally, even if you're a very new trader, what does that tell you about whatever just happened? We had this big red movement to the downside, lots of sell pressure, and then this ginormous green candle. That tells us something about price. Obviously, we were uh, potentially oversold and you saw a rush in from buyers at this point. What that tells us is that there is clear demand, at least for the time being, at the level that we saw the candlestick come from. Now, a couple things to note about a candlestick uh, or engulfing pattern. Well, we have you know red candles before. Uh, one thing I like to look for is something that is sort of pulling back or uh, you know trending lower in the shorter time frames, and then all of a sudden you get something like this, where you get these ginormous open to close green candles that entirely engulf. You can see, right? engulfs the previous red candle. This shows a strong punch in the face to sellers by the bulls trying to push things up. And the same can be said on the flip side when you get a bearish engulfing. So we'd call this a bull one, right? And then this is a bear one. So a bearish engulfing is the same idea, but flipped. You've got a market that is pushing higher. Things are looking really positive for the stock, commodity, you know, FX chain, uh, currency pair, whatever you're looking at, right? And then you get this ginormous, aggressive, engulfing red candle. And this shows the opposite. It shows a lot of sellers at a certain area and a lot of sell or, or supply at a certain point. Now, this can be a clue that maybe we're going to see more sellers as things strengthen and start to potentially head the other way. So again, here is that in formation. You can see a green candle, assuming we're pushing higher, and then it's a green candle followed by an incredibly strong bearish engulfing candle that engulfs the previous body, right? Now, there are different definitions. Some people are going to say, Nick, you're saying it wrong. It's got to entirely engulf above and below. And the, the cool thing about uh, forex trading, stock trading, whatever you're trading you're doing, is it's not a hard science. It's not like clearly, you know, outlined uh, in all cases. I mean, yes, you could you could get incredibly technical and you could say it's got to have a wick above the previous and a wick below and a body, right? Though maybe some people like to get very, very pinpoint with it. But for me, with my candlestick patterns, just seeing something like this, this would consider uh, this would be considered engulfing candle because it gets the point across. We had upward motion and then we have a strong sell pressure come in uh, enough to really completely engulf uh, at least the body of the previous candle. Okay, so let's keep going. So now the next one is probably my favorite of all the candlestick patterns. It is the pin bar reversal pattern, sometimes also called a hammer pattern. Uh, it is a very interesting one that shows a lot of rejection. And this is the name of the game for looking for potential reversals. What this shows, and I'm going to explain why in just a second, what this shows is a strong level of, re of rejection of price at a certain point. So let's put this in right into context. Now, one thing to note is that unlike the last one, this candlestick is a one candlestick pattern. Some people will like to go for confirmation to see a second candle that closes bullish after this. That might be a, a you know another option to look at or to test yourself. But this idea is that, okay, you have something that is trending lower, and then you get this very interesting looking candle. You get something like this with a nice long wick at the bottom. Now, what this shows us, if we break this down into just its pieces for a moment here, is you can you can kind of understand we're in a downtrend, sellers are in control, right? So it looks like things are going lower. And then you get this really strong punch by sellers. Things are looking really good for the sellers, uh, probably getting a little euphoric. But then before the candle is able to even close bearish, the buyers come roaring back and shoot price off of the bottom. The reason that this is a signal of potential rejection and maybe even a reversal pattern is the idea that, okay, well, if, if buyers are so strong down in this area, it is likely that buyers will try and support this area and to continue to push price up from here. Basically, buyers are putting up a real good fight in this area, and it is likely that it could go back the other way for a while. 
So that is the very basic concept of a pin bar or a hammer pattern. They are very similar in nature. There may be some slight differences in pure technicalities. If you'd like to look them up yourself, you can. Like I said, when it comes to candlestick patterns, I am like a loose definition kind of guy. I don't like to get incredibly picky with my candlestick patterns, but we can also say the inverse for the bearish version of a pin bar. So let's say a market is trending higher, things are looking really positive, and then you get something like this. You get a candle where it shoots higher, but then is met with a lot of rejection from sellers. Okay, this is a clue that potentially we are going lower. Why? Because sellers in this area were very aggressive and seemed to really want to sell or, uh, you know, a lot of supply was found in this region. Enough so that all of the gains were erased in the very same candle that they were formed in. That's a huge signal to potentially look for further downside should we head lower. Now I'm gonna talk about something in a second that is very, very important, so stay tuned with that. Just seeing this candle, I should say, in case you don't finish the video, uh, if you see this candle, right, that is not a guarantee that price is going to go up. This is not a guarantee that price is going to go low. As I mentioned earlier, these are clues in the market. These are not guarantees or absolute certainties. Nothing is certain in markets, unfortunately, and so the idea is if you see these, these are clues, not certainties. I wanna say that before you get too far. Some of you guys might click off the video, so I want you to at least get that somewhere in here. All right, now the next one is kind of an interesting one. It's a three white soldiers or three black crows. There's different names for this, but the very simple concept is you have a market that shoots up three strong green candles in a row or three wrong, uh, strong red candles in a row. And this is a very basic concept of uh, strength or, or a lot of weakness, right? Because something that is able to hold three bars strong may be willing to continue higher. And on the inverse, three bars to the downside in a row shows a lot of strength by sellers and may potentially be heading lower. Very simple concept. Again, one of these uh, common pattern that you'll see, these are mostly reversal patterns that we are talking about in this video. So you have things that we're saying, okay, again, they're pushing lower and then you get bam, 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 three green candles to the upside. Let's pretend those are green. And that shows potential demand is returning into this market and maybe due to head higher. Same thing on the flip side. Uh, you know, you have a market pushing higher, then you get bam, 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 three red candles in a row lower. Is this a guarantee that price is going lower? No, but it's a potential clue showing that there was a strong, at least change in the last few bars of sentiment on the market that we're looking at. Okay, so now that we know a couple candlestick patterns, I do wanna say before we keep going, you can go find more of these. There's lots of candlestick patterns out there that you can go study, go back test yourself, uh, find where you like to use them. Do you trade gold? Do you trade the euro, et cetera, et cetera. Go test these things for yourself. And also, if there's other ones that you wanna explore that I didn't mention today, there are plenty of other uh, resources. You can look them up on the internet, et cetera. But what do we actually do now that we know some patterns? It's great that we can identify some of them and go from there, and we're gonna look at some examples in a second, but how do we actually combine patterns with other factors to create high probability trade setups? Well, context is key, okay? And the idea here is that yes, candlestick patterns are cool, yes, they can be powerful, but it is not a solely going to you know be a, a powerful money-making machine just by themselves. Maybe you have traders out there who like to just trade candlestick patterns, but for me, they are a complement to the rest of my trading style, which is, for me, mostly due to supply and demand, looking for support and resistance, and then also combining it truthfully with fundamental and sentiment analysis, which are other concepts that I've talked about on my channel and talk about quite frequently in my own trading uh, journey. So. Anyways, combining it with other factors is a huge component. So signals by themselves may not be, you know, absolutely 100% reliable, but a strong engulfing candle with a nice catalyst from news or a strong upward trend, those can be huge. So let's look at some examples. So let's say we see this market that's trending up. You can see beautiful little, uh, you know, upward trend. You've got higher lows coming in here and price is pulling back once again to test this area here of support, right? And then you see this beautiful bullish engulfing. Here, right, right there on the chart, is a bullish engulfing that is a great example. Now, I will say, the ones that I'm showing you guys are absolutely cherry-picked, so please know this is not every single candle. But a lot of times, um, you know, you're gonna see stuff like this, and 
the question is, you know, is it going to be the big winner? Maybe, maybe not. Like here's an example. I'll just point it out while I'm here. I would consider that a engulfing candle and it kind of did a little upside, but then it rolled over. So not every single one of these is going to work out. Uh, but the idea here is that here's a good example so that you can at least see the concept. So now there is a bullish engulfing. You can see it pulling back, like I said, to support. And then you've got this market that continued higher. And now we've got potential insights into where we could see some trades. So uh, let me just go back for a second. So how can I actually trade this, right? So here's the example. Let's say, let's say you see this bullish engulfing. It comes off support. Things look really good. One thing to include here is that we're in a strong upward trend, something that I look for in almost all of my trades, right? So we see a strong upward trend and then you get the bullish engulfing. It's a great little signal there. So how could we trade it? Well, I'll, I'll draw in some examples. Let's say I bought on the very next candle. I could be fairly aggressive and look to just buy after seeing a, a strong bullish engulfing signal. For me, what I would usually do is I'd look to put stops underneath that zone that I highlighted right? So for me, maybe I put a stop loss somewhere here. Now, my personal style of trading is I really like to trail stops and go with the flow. So what I would probably do personally is I would, you know, as things go higher, let's say price is trailing higher, I would go ahead and move that stop to break even. If price keep, kept going, I would look to trail that stop further using structure. I've got videos all about how I like to trail stops on my channel. Feel free to check those out if you'd like. But the main idea is looking to go long after we see something like this in the context of an uptrend. Maybe I like the fundamentals on this chart, whatever we're looking at, right? And so that is how I would actually enter a trade. So you see the candle, I'm looking to put stops below levels of structure. Personally, I like to use price action, like I said, to gauge my stop losses. So again, I'm entering on the break and the close of this candle. So I'd be looking to be going long, right? With a stop loss below structure. Should things continue, I play the trade out, try and catch a big winner. If it works, great. If it doesn't, maybe I just go back to the back testing drawing board, or maybe I just look for the next setup and just accept that losses are going to happen sometimes. Okay, so let's keep going. We'll take another look at another example. Here is an example of a bearish pin bar. So here is an interesting chart because you've got something that is overall trending to the downside, right? I believe if you had zoomed out further on this, you would have seen that this thing had uh, further, further higher highs back here. But uh, again, lower highs coming into this market, strong to the downside. And then you see something like this. So you get lots of sell pressure here on this market, but then buyers come in and it looks like they want to push price off of the lows here. Start coming up. We reach a key spot moving average, looks nice. And then the one that we're looking for, the bearish pin bar pops up right here. So again, remember, when we're looking for bearish pin bars, we're looking for a market that is what? It's trailing higher, pulling back, whatever you want to say. And then I, ideally, you see a nice, strong, you know, rejection candle here at a key level of resistance. Now, or maybe a moving average or whatever you look for, Fibonacci extensions, retracements, things like that. So if I was to draw this level here, you can see it kind of lines up nicely. So you got some resistance, you've got bearish pin bars everything's looking nice, and then bam, maybe there's an opportunity to look to go short, right? So that's the idea there. So I would look to sell this market in this case. I'm looking to sell going with that flow of the market. And then I'd probably, after seeing this candle, and again, it would probably be an entry right on the very next candle. If I was looking at this candlestick pattern, I'd say, oh, that looks kind of nice. And then maybe look to sell after the fact. Then maybe I put stops just above that structure of where the previous, uh, pin bar formed, right? So we've got resistance, we've got a pin bar, a couple nice little signals. Let's say I even like the fundamental side of this. Everything lines up, looks great. I'm in it for a sell. Okay, from there, what do we do? Well, for me, like I said, I could be trailing my stops, but maybe you just go for something like uh, a three to one, right? Let's say one, two, or one, two, three, roughly here. I'm just eyeballing it, but let's say we put a, a three to one, nice little three to one price rolls over, you catch your, your move and then you're out something like that. And again, these are concepts that I'm throwing out there for you to go test yourself. Uh, you know, the idea of a candlestick pattern, like I said, it is a clue. There are many ways to employ them in strategies and use cases in the markets. So I'm just going through some examples and telling you, uh, some different ways that to play it. But again, like I, for me, I'm looking at trail stops. I'm looking to go with the flow of the market. So if price, you know, comes up to this level, I'm in for a sell. 
price starts going lower, I'd be looking to trail that stop with the trade, right? Until it reverses. And that's, you know, probably where I would get stopped out for a profit. That's how I'd play that one. Okay. So, and obviously, like I said, I know these are hindsight trades. I'm just showing, I'm, I'm putting up easy ones just to show you guys for the sake of example. Okay. This is a cool one because we can see a couple different candlestick patterns all in one. So you've got a three red crows first. So we're in a downtrend, right? Three red crows right here. So you got one red candle, two red candles, three red candles, lots of sell pressure there. If you were an aggressive breakout trader, you know, you also note that, okay, well, you've got support here. Price is breaking underneath that. Maybe you're looking to sell, right? In fact, if you were patient enough to, to even look for a pullback, maybe you got in right around on this on this retest. But again, we're, we're cherry picking here. So I'm showing you the best possible cases. Let's just assume today that we're all perfect traders, which, you know, we're not, but uh, we can we can pretend, right? So let's say price goes down three times like this. We've got a strong red rejection there. And then let's say I'm looking to sell into this market. Let's say I just aggressively enter on the next one, put in a buy or sorry, not a buy. We're not buying that. We're looking to sell that, right? So we're going with the flow. Uh, price is going lower. You know, maybe I'm fairly conservative with a stop loss. I put a stop loss this high. You know, I'm risking some distance there. And then again, this is where your exit strategy comes into play. For me, that would be trailing stops. So maybe I'd move up to break even. Uh, you know, once price gets going a little bit, maybe once it gets down to here, I'd be moving into one R. Maybe I take one R on the trade. And again, if that doesn't make sense, I've got videos where I talk about trailing stops. You can search up Trader Nick trailing stops on YouTube, and that may be helpful to you. Um, let me also point out, you've got this beautiful bullish engulfing candle, but for me, this would probably be one that I'd skip on. Why? Well, because we're in a pretty strong downward trend. And so even though this candle uh, candlestick pattern looks beautiful and you would have made some really great profit there, uh, most likely, I wouldn't have taken that trade. I would have waited on the sidelines because, again, we're in a pretty strong downtrend. So just even though, and this is a good lesson, even though that this signal would have worked, it's probably not going to give me as high probability of an entry as some of the other ones out there. So I would probably skip this one and wait for something that goes with the trend like we see right here. This one right here is a very uh, small scale, but still a decent bearish engulfing candle. Again, here's the bearish version right here right? So bearish coming in here. Uh, and then again, just the next wave of selling a lower high comes in, looks beautiful. Uh, by the way, if you know what a doji candle is, that's kind of a doji candle right there, uh, which is a sign of uh, indecision at the top of a move. We didn't talk about doji in this one, but maybe we'll talk about it in a future video. But again, bearish engulfing comes in and then bam, 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 right? This one is interesting because not only is it a bearish engulfing, which you actually kind of see it in this one too. You see a bearish engulfing, which could have gotten you in earlier, or maybe even than the three red crows, which you can see these both are three red crows, right? Uh, they're also both bearish engulfing. And this is something that you're going to see quite often. So a lot of times a three red crow starts with a bearish engulfing because you get that big rejection that keeps going. But again, sometimes people prefer more confirmation. And again, that is something that you'll have to go test for yourself, go play around with, see what you like best. But yeah, so again, going back to this concept, let's say I sold as a, as a, we'll call this one a bearish engulfing, you know, stops above structure could be somewhere around here. And again, putting that stop loss in there for me trailing stops and looking to keep going with this move. Uh, again, I'm not going to go too far in how I trail stops, but let's say that for example, instead of trailing stops, you just put a strict three to one, you know, that's one, two, three. And obviously, by the way, if you were doing this legitimately, uh, you wouldn't just eyeball it like me. You would go actually take the time to measure this out if you were using something like a three to one. But in this case, that's three times your initial one times risk, right? So when I say three R, so you're risking one to make three. So if you made, if you risked a hundred bucks, you'd make 300 on this trade if it went all the way down and tagged your take profit. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for setups where I get a nice risk to reward in the trade. Okay. So let me just uh, bring everything down to earth because I just showed you guys a bunch of examples that worked out perfectly. And that's not going to happen when you actually go look at the charts. Sometimes it will work. Sometimes it will not. At the end of the day, it's going to be up to your strategy, your risk management plan, all of the very important components that go into successful trading to actually make you profitable, not just some magical candlestick pattern. Candlestick patterns, like I said, they can be a hint, but they are no guarantee of success by themselves. 
They can be used, however, to increase success rate, find better setups that give you a little bit more confirmation or opportunities that make more sense and can be, compa- can be very powerful combined with multiple factors. Like I said, trend, support and resistance, Fibonacci, fundamentals, sentiment analysis, all of which are things that I've talked about on my channel. Feel free to check them all out by just searching up Trader Nick followed by the category or topic you'd like to see. Like I said, make sure to watch more free content on my channel. I put all this stuff out for completely for free. I do it because I enjoy doing it. Obviously, I make a little bit of money from YouTube ad revenue. Uh, it does just support everything that that my team and I, we do. We create lots of different content for traders. We have uh, a second channel called A1 Trading where we share you know all sorts of stuff, uh, free webinars from our various traders from around the world, et cetera. So if you enjoy the content that we're putting out, uh, it again, it's a lot of work goes into this stuff. So if you wouldn't mind, make sure to subscribe to my channel down below. A lot of you guys watch the content, but you're not yet subscribed. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Join the family here on YouTube and uh, also join our newsletter. We, we've got an email newsletter where we share trade ideas every week. We've got all sorts of different free perks to being on our newsletter. So if you're not already, click the link down below in the description to find our newsletter and make sure to, like I said, subscribe here on YouTube. So with that said, guys, thank you very much for being here on this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to smash that like button as well, and we'll see you back in the next one.